Hi, I'm David Kerner, and I'm the president of Touchpoint Property Management in Charlotte, North Carolina. And today we're going to discuss the process of evicting a tenant from your rental property. Eviction is a process that allows a landlord to lawfully remove a tenant from a rental property. If not handled correctly, evicting a tenant can be very complicated, costly, and time consuming. That's why I decided to provide this information to landlords to help make it easier. It's important to understand that we're not attorneys. The information presented to you here is simply estimates and is not legal advice. It's recommended that you consult with an attorney for legal advice. Some of the most commonly asked questions that we get are, number one, how do you go about evicting a tenant? Number two, what is the time frame for evicting a tenant? And number three, what are the fees associated with evicting a tenant? Now, there are two main reasons for eviction. The first reason, the tenants are not vacating the property following the termination of the lease. This is what we call a holdover tenant. And the second reason is when the tenant is breaching any of the terms of the rental agreement. For example, not paying the rent, damaging the property, criminal activity, unauthorized occupants or pets, or the tenants are disturbing the neighbors. Here's an example of an average eviction timeline. Timelines can vary due to the individual circumstances and how backlogged the court or sheriff's office is. For this scenario, let's assume that the rent is due on the first of the month and it's considered late after the fifth of the month. This brings us to the first day. This is when the landlord or property manager sends what's called a 10 day notice of demand for payment to the tenant. This can be delivered personally, posted on the property or via email or certified mail. And this 10 day period can be waived in advance by a special clause in the lease. We provide that, that clause in all of our leases. However, the court seemed to favor providing the tenant with at least a five day grace period to cure the problem. So the best practice would be to wait until at least the sixth day until you file the official complaint with the court. Now, assuming the tenant fails to pay the full balance of the late of the lease within the grace period, and your lease does provide for waiving the 10 day notice period, the eviction timeline is as follows. Now we're at day six. This is when you're gonna to go to the courthouse. You're gonna file what's called a complaint in summary ejectment. Filing fees may vary, but normally the court costs are $96 and it's $30 per defendant. And it's vital to make sure that all the signed leasees must be listed as defendants on the complaint. If you don't, it'll cause more delays in the process. Now we're at day 15. This is when you're going to attend court. Around the 7th to 10 business day of the complaint being filed, your, your case will be heard. If you win the case, then you're awarded what's called a judgment for possession, which is not final because the tenant still has a 10 day appeal period. So this will take us into day 25. The 10 day tenant appeal period has ended and a few scenarios may play out. The first scenario, is that the tenant does not file an appeal and formally notifies you that they have decided to move out on their own. Then you're done, congratulations. The second scenario, the tenant does not file an appeal, but the tenant does not vacate the property. At this point, you file what's called a writ of possession, which notifies the sheriff, and within seven to 10 days of the writ being issued, they'll arrange to meet you at the property so that you may change the locks to prevent access. At this point, don't remove anything from the property. At this point, you just post a notification on the property and wait another seven days to allow the tenant to retrieve their belongings from the property during reasonable hours, of course. You don't need to rush out there in the morning or within one hour notice. Now we're at the 42 day period and you've already met the sheriff at the property, you've already changed the locks on the door, and you've allowed the tenants to retrieve their belongings from the home. At this point, you may take possession of the property and remove whatever the tenant leaves behind, and the process is completed. You wanna use common sense. You wanna take pictures of what you're removing from the property and consult legal counsel if the market value of the contents exceeds $750. The third scenario is when the tenant does file an appeal. 
This will take you into the 60 day mark and it could go as long as 90 days. At this point, you must wait for a hearing at the district court, which could take anywhere from four to six weeks for another court date. And if, it's, and if this ruling is in your favor, then you file the writ of possession, which we just discussed before. At this point, it's important that you don't accept rent from the tenant. The tenant is instructed to pay the rent to the clerk of court instead. Now, here's a shortcut to shorten the process that I just described. If the tenant doesn't pay the clerk of court the rent after about eight days, you can file the writ of possession early prior to that court date which will shave off a huge chunk of time from the process. And at this point, congratulations, the eviction process is complete. Keep in mind that after you win in district court, the tenant can still take it to appeals court, but it's not very easy. It's not a very easy process for the tenant and it's not that common. So we'll go into that on another, on another blog. If your property is owned by an entity like a corporation or an LLC, you must have an attorney assist you at district court. And attorneys typically charge somewhere between $200 to $600 to, to, to uh, handle the entire process for you. And it usually includes court costs. The best way to prevent having to go through the hassle of the, of the eviction process is by hiring a diligent property manager with a thorough tenant screening process so that you're less likely to run into any problems with the tenant violating the lease terms. If you must evict, keep in mind that your property manager, along with an attorney, can oversee the entire process for you, which will ensure that the matter is handled precisely and efficiently, which will in turn save you time and money, most of all, alleviate your stress. Now, if you ever have any questions about the steps that you can take to prevent or handle an eviction, please give me a call and I'll be happy to set aside some time to help you. Thank you very much.